Um, yeah, so I'm originally from Texas, and I've worked in the East and the West Coast of the United States. I, uh, I'm currently, uh, I went, you know, I was at CyArk, I, uh, I was in New York uh, working at Terraform One, so I've had these kind of both sides of taste, but I've kind of always had my heart in Texas. Uh, because I work with a firm there called Heron Mazzy. Um, we've been doing work for about eight years. We kind of speculate on, on uh, academic discourse and um, in a kind of humorous comic book way. But my own work uh, focuses on um, kind of taking that kind of comic book and realizing it as a form. Um, the lecture tonight is called uh, Not Even Bar Bar. All right, and I'm going to start out by telling a story that I heard from uh, one of my partners at Heron Mazzi. He used to work for John Hayduck uh, in the 70s. And uh, John Hayduck and Raymond Abraham uh, and John uh, Maruschek were taking a trip over to Chicago Ben Alley. Well, uh, they t always tell these stories. And in one of the stories that Hayduck always enjoyed telling was his love of Barbar. -Bar. And Barbar -Bar is this little cute elephant we know from the old cartoons in the 70s. Uh, but, you know, if you take a look at his work, you can start to see how his love of Barbar, -Bar, the character of Barbar, -Bar starts coming out into the objects he makes. So here on the right is Security, which is in Oslo, 1989. And you can kind of tell a little, maybe that's a that's a Barbar. -Bar. And I would say also that this is another Barbar. -Bar. This is the Wall House in the Netherlands. Um, from plan, from perspective, Everywhere you can see, maybe this wall is the ears, maybe the long hallway is the uh, trunk. Anyways, uh, so he had, in his career, he always had this kind of idea of character. As you can see with the drawing on the right here, uh, a lot of the drawings came out in this kind of character fashion, which was expressing an idea, which he calls the mask, uh, a kind of expression of oneself into this character. Anyways, in our own our work, uh, the one on the left here is a, a project we did for the uh, uh, Venice Beninale. Um, it wasn't built this way, but <laughs> these were the objects we were going to build. Um, and they're characterized for holding paintings and holding artwork, but each one actually has a characteristic of the animal, from the giraffe to the, the table, which is like a cheetah, and then I think one was a monkey. <laughs> uh, anyways. So the one on the right, though, is a project we just recently got published in, in a blank space of uh, fairy tales, how architecture tell, tells a story, um, where we kind of took the ideas of uh, J, uh, J. Kipling um, from his uh, book, Just So Stories, where he kind of characterizes different traits of animals into how they got that. You know, the, the elephant's trunk was pulled out, and the, the uh, camel got its hump, couple other stories like that. It was um, out of that, we, we kind of came up with these kind of um, characters that were like removing their familiarity, but were going towards more of an architectural type of object, um, what we call a new primitive. So we kind of look at the idea that the base geometries we've been using for years, the, the cube, the sphere, the pyramid, are kind of old and exhausted. And so we look ourselves to try to find new forms that could possibly be new moves into an architectural object. As, as you see here, the one on the left is the whale, and the one on the right is the rhino. Um, and in, in my own work, uh, this is some work I did at SciArc. Um, I was using these kind of ideas as an idea of making a bear, how a bear could be an object you could use for the inside out object and the outside object, and an object that meets the ground. And of course, he's inside of a pillow in this case. Um, and that kind of led me to this idea of how, in fashion, how the, the character of the model, so to speak, can also have some of these characteristics uh, that are formed from the dress. They can become a new object from the dress. And that led me into uh, the idea of uh, looking towards software and computation as a means of you know, recreating the idea of the dress in the computer. Um, and it, it led me to some very specific softwares that are used in fashion today, um, very recently, uh, to create dresses and everything like that from, from the ground up. Anyways, that, that became kind of this idea of a new form of 3D uh, typology. You know, typically we have the solid modeling techniques that we see in SolidWorks, CATIA, a whole bunch of other programs. Polygon modeling we see, of course, in any of the um, 
you know, uh, Maya, Cinema 4D, we all use these things. Sub Ds too, height fields, you know, this is what we see from um, projecting um, uh, black and white images and creating height maps. And voxels is pretty new. And so I, I propose this third, this fourth, sixth type, excuse me, that's the, uh, the fabric, which is uh, basically the way it works is it's a domain of particles that is surrounded and within there, the particles will rearrange to polygons. And then at those domain edges, it will rationalize itself to the next domain by stitching. So the number of stitches according to the number of particles, and you get this new kind of object, which is very different from our typical views of soft body dynamics and rigid bodies in the sense that in those operations in Maya and Cinema 4D, for instance, it usually starts from a polygon and then goes to a particle system in order to work. And so this goes the opposite way. Um, and so I started investigating the idea of how we could start using that um, with a kind of knowledge of the fashion industry and these kind of techniques they use in there, which are very different from what we look at typically in architecture. Um, and that led me that I started doing that with various things. These are a series of columns I was doing um, that you're using these techniques, pleating and folding uh, towards an, a new kind of form uh, and a cube too. But, you know, bringing back to this idea of character, I wanted to create these new primitives in here, not just the ones that I was typically using in other, uh, other types of modeling and design. So I started creating these animals as my new building blocks for new types of architecture. Here the elephant, which from this diagram you can see, it is made 2D and then sewn to the other 3D. And this is a frog, and here's the giraffe. And I thought, well, if I did anything, I had to do this. So this is my fat domino. Um, and so th this was kind of a, a playful thing I started working with. How could the object be on a plinth and be sewn together? In this case, the whale is kind of treated as an object on a plinth. The elephant becomes this kind of big sculpture of a unit. That's why I put a little person on there. And then how they could stack together and we could start forming these new kind of creative and humorous things within, uh, within new forms of architecture. And then they came to this idea, well, if I'm doing that, well, what does this really do structurally? You know, and so if you can have a skin that actually performs as the structural unit instead of our uh, typical domino we've been using for years, uh, <laughs> would the model look something like this, which I call the fats domino. Um, and so we, we've kind of been working on this idea. We started from small scales and we're kind of working up to the bigger scale. This is a project we were doing in a, uh, Dallas uh, for an art installation. Um, we were taking these kind of humors, uh, at this point in time, we were taking them in and defamiliarizing them to a point where you could barely tell that they're the animal we started from. In this case, the, uh, the uh, lawnmower here is a uh, piece of a giraffe. Um, and this is uh, an elephant in the top right that we were kind of manipulating into kind of everyday objects. Um, and then we were just trying to see how many things can we make out of this. Flowers and lawn ornament, uh, a necklace, and a, um, a, because I'm in Texas, I've got to put an animal on the wall. So this is my, my elephant flower on the wall. And then, uh, then in New York, we did a competition for storefront for art and architecture, and we said, well, what if we just you know, deployed these things to the city? And so we, we looked at these four different sites across, uh, right by the new museum. And we thought, well, <laughs> they could be put in these boxes and blown up. We could deliver them to the site. And you, go, you pull them out and they blow up out of this thing, you know. And so they kind of sit on the, on the corner and the people kind of occupy the street around these things. In this case, it's kind of a, a stage for people. And then they could be uh, <coughs> things on the ground or they could be like podiums for people to protest. Um, <laughs> are these megaphones that you could, you could stand on and scream through and they could you know, speak to the city. Um, anyways, then I, I, then I was working at Tom Wiscombe's office for a while and we, we had a research uh, division there that we were researching like how, how else can we, like how far can we take this in the, uh, in the construction industry? And so he goes, can you actually make these things? And I said, yeah, I can. So we started actually buying fabric from the fa uh, fab fashion industry and started cutting these things out. And we, we made these funny little objects 
of hair and felt and a couple different things. And we, in, in this series, we, were, we decided that the character didn't need to necessarily be uh, the shape of the object, but the character could be its skin. And so the skin could have a kind of character on the skin. And so as you can kind of see here, the rhino is now part of the skin. And so he's folded onto a, just a simple primitive, but now we're creating a new primitive with this new skin. And uh, we started saying, well, maybe that could be a house. So um, we, we 3D printed it, we put it on the site. Here's the, the inside uh, object. And then here's the, uh, the object uh, sitting in front of the little swimming pool. Um, and so it was this little house up in the hills. Um, and as you can see from some of these images, as you turn around the object, the character of the skin starts to change slightly. And so you get different readings from different areas. Like here, you can slightly see a bunny rabbit. Maybe that's a bunny rabbit, maybe it's not. Um, you know, and then it disappears on another side. Anyways, that brings me to my thesis work, uh, which that, that earlier work what you saw with the, the bags and stuff was the kind of beginning of it, which was looking at how we could really use this as a very large scale. And um, in this case, on the, on the left was the first studies, looking at towards um, a kind of idea like Mike Kelly. I don't, I don't know if you guys, any of you guys know that, but he kind of humorously put together um, animals he created and made these kind of constellations that became the kind of interesting forms. And that, that's the ones on the left right here. Um, as you can see, when you get down to the bottom one, there's a certain number of these things you can use uh, that it starts losing its form so much that it, it's not recognizable. So we, we dropped it down to three, and that became a building of the site in New York. Uh, it just simply sits on a plinth. But it's a, it's a speculation at how big these things can get. And uh, I don't think this is buildable now, but I, I say in the future, uh, it, it quite may well be possible. Anyways, <laughs> that's it. That was quick, actually. <laughs> 13 minutes, exactly. Uh, speed, speed lecturing. <laughs> yeah, you look, <laughs> you look a bit. Uh, <laughs> sorry for that. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, questions and comments? I want to make a little observation. Okay. Meanwhile, they can, they can think about questions. Uh, it's just an observation. It's, um, it's nice to see the difference between the European approach and the American approach which is bold, speculative, um, and uh, different from ours. A bit, a bit more, um, how to say that? Like, um, not bound that much uh, with the reality. And it's, it's lovely for us. Thank you, I appreciate it. I don't, I don't like being bound in reality, actually. <laughs> but I, um, I had a chance to experience um, I visited Sayark um, while I was studying at the Angamante. And the Angamante, I was studying with Hernan, Hernan Diaz Alonso, and he brought a piece of Sayark to, to Vienna. And the Angamante at that point was a bit American too. And you could see the difference wo of what was happening there and at other universities, good universities. I'm not saying one is better or worse, it's just you can actually see the difference. And I, I was. This is this is very present in your in what you were showing. Yeah, I kind of. Uh, I've. Uh, it changed me a little bit. I, it, it, Sayark has an effect on people, I think, and yeah. and it. Uh, you know, if you if you looked at my work previously, it was very different. You know, I was this this green, productive green. You know, uh -huh. and everything had to do something with biology. But then, you know, I go there, then then you get into this like yeah, you're like a. Somewhere between an artist and an architect, I think it's a very weird, weird place to be. But you know, I, I think I think the speculation is necessary, you know, uh, uh, to move the discourse for, forward. You know, and that that's what Cyrus, I think, is the best for. You know. I, I actually um, have a question, which is more about. Uh, in a way, you could argue that the, the method you developed is some form of form finding, right? It's actually quite a generative method where you try to, to 
tease certain forms out of uh, the interaction between the material you use and, and the kind of basic figure. So would, would you would you agree with that? that I I would not actually. I, I would I would say I would say that there's a very very intentionality uh, that was done through lots of rigorous uh, repetition to know that I know how to use this and uh, to pick specifically what I was going for. Uh, because especially on larger scale, the, the argument of the material disappears well, because it's clear that that would never be a fabric and it would be something that is draped or clad or kind of reconstructed. And at that moment, the transition from from, a, from an initial fabric that you use as a form filing technique to a large scale where this would have to go into brass or where we panelize it like copper panels and then be attached to, to like a, a subframe. At that moment, when, when you actually use the, the material itself, it becomes a, a, a genuine effect. I agree, and this has been the argument for a while that, that, that the panelization has to happen and that, that will, will hurt the object. But you know, at a certain level, I mean, you could argue that that concrete fabric, to a certain level, could do this at, at least the house scale. Um, now, to have it transparent would be a different story. But um, now, yeah, and so and, as you see with the house that we were doing at Wiscombe's office, that we were getting into like how big, how small, and how big can we make it? So what's what's the medium? Um, I think to really push this stuff forward, yeah, it's going to have to be panelized. But I don't think, at a certain level, the panelization actually ruins it because the panelization is just another element that, that you can make it disappear or express it. Uh, so this is kind of almost the same work as Frank Gehry's, right? Where you form find, like he uses crumbled material and then scales it up, which kind of totally changes the relation of you with the you know, piece of paper. In a way, is this like, would, would you kind of situate yourself in that lineage? Uh, well, I mean, maybe. I, I, I don't think I would hate to be called, uh, I, I don't grumble at my model and change it, you know. I, I don't think that's what I do. But uh, I, 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 it's not like that. I actually really intentionally, now, it, you know, if it has a site condition, I think it's, it's something that's applied to it. That was set on a site. It wasn't like I... I, uh, I made it in the thing and go, oh, that's the, that's the point, right there. <laughs> but, uh... Well, but I don't know. I don't, sorry, just don't. Um, like, I would like to ask you, you make this very distinct decision that your figures have no inside. <coughs> There's no inside, or no interiority <coughs> at all. So, and, I mean, uh, um, it, it's, I often spend, when you show the, the Heidegg projects in the beginning, they have also, there's no inside uh, as well. So I think you have like, or like, I th can you a little bit talk more about that issue? I mean, because it's really different from a uh, uh, European approach. Usually, or commonly, um, like when I'm thinking about fabric projects, um, most people are like, completely uh, interested to create like a manifold partition, right? and your topological completely decide very specifically to stay actually with, with platonic pro uh, bodies, more or less. So and you propose actually with your uh, new kind of path to a model or like the, the new uh, flow of fabric calculation, new kind of topological uh, transformation of it. And yeah, this, this would be interesting. You get more like feedback from your background, how this connects to the, for example, to the city as a, in a conceptual way. Yeah, I mean, I, I, the, the inside question is definitely, I mean, there, there is insides of all of it. I, I intentionally don't show it uh, because I, it becomes a certain level, uh, I, think, I think what needs to happen is multiple layers is, is what's happening now in the world. There's some more current work I'm not showing that that's the investigation now, like how, how does the inside really create a new body? Um, because I think the outside and the inside need to be two separate things. Uh, and uh, if it just is floor plates and a core, it doesn't work. So it needs to be, uh, and that's kind of with the Tom Wiskin project, uh, we were dealing with the...
Right. That's exactly what it is for me. They're two separate. So the inside body that's fabric is also different from the outside body that's fabric. So there's a separation between the two. Do you have a question? No, no, no. It's just, uh, less a question, more like, uh, I have to admit, I really love your, your, your thing. It's just like, it's phenomenal. I mean, you know, but mostly because of, of the, the kind of smile and laughter and humor that is sort of on the verge of, uh, of, of being afraid. And, you know, it's, 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 it's radical in the sense that, uh, that you're being like, oh shit, that's new. Like, you know, it's frighteningly new. It's, it's really beautiful. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. I really appreciate the comment. <laughs> I, I, and that's, that's, that's for me what um, I, I find it actually is, is coming. I, I, there's a project from uh, the Bartlett that just recently happened that is still in my head constantly. I, I forget what the girls' names are, but they did, did some of this work with uh, a chair and a, like a column piece on the wall. And it was basically felt that they resined and hardened. And it's, uh, you know, I, I, I think this is coming. I mean, it, the software really hasn't been around that long, and the, these kind of concepts of the flat sewn to 2D that we can actually fabricate it hasn't been long, around so long. So, I um, mean, of course, we have things that from the sheet metal industry and stuff like this that deal with this. And some of these techniques have been used in the aerospace industry right. for skinning yeah. airplanes and stuff for a while. Uh, Gerber, Optex, Electra, all these companies have. It's, it's interesting. They've been kind of hidden since the 90s. And because of a couple recent stuff they've been doing with the game industry, they've come out. And I, that's how I know about it. A friend of mine from um, Gearbox, he told me, he goes, check this one out. And, they, and then it's, it, that started this whole thing, actually. Um, yeah, I mean, there, you know, there might be some you know, very surprising, I don't know, structural behaviors that are resulting from wrinkles, you know, from, from something that you would, you know, because, you know, we would think in this, uh, in, you know, this delusion manner, like, in, I don't know, this funny illustrative manner of food. Right? Yeah. You're suddenly investigating particular but particularities of something that, that I'm really interested in, uh, sort of the figurative situ situation, which is like funny at the same time. And then it starts having all these particularities of, you know, uh, I mean, if I look at your work, uh, um, you know Bowery, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah, all right. Okay, so, all right. I mean, awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah, I mean, like, th th that's, that is my point, that it is like, I, <laughs> you know, we, me and my, my colleagues, we always just joke about Kim Kardashian and how fashion could someday be, and kind of horrible media someday be in, in, uh, in architecture. It's, it's coming, I guarantee you. Um, and so why not a Burberry house or like, like a coach bag house, you know? That, that's coming, you know, as horrible as it may seem. So. I, hopefully we we can beat them to it, so yeah. you know they hire us to do the coach house. But the, the, the outrageous, you know, <laughs> the, you know uh, a Bowery is, is definitely going to have its heroes. I'm pretty sure. It's, that's why I'm like, you know, I think it's spot on. It's really cool. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Was I, I was recently reading um, because the kind of uh, the idea of the the funny and the kind of the joke. It's a it's a postmodern idea which has been. <laughs> around like, since, um, <laughs> since the 70s. And I was reading this interview with uh, Paul Freisner, who's also investigating <coughs> these kind of awkward objects, he calls them, or like clumsy objects. Uh, uh, but um, someone actually, uh, in the interview, they ask him, how many times can you tell a joke? So that would also be my question. Well, we'll, we'll see how long my joke is until it gets exhausted, yeah, you know? Yeah, like, when is <laughs> I, I'm getting I'm getting tired of the elephant actually. I've been using him for a while, so <laughs> I think I have to switch animals. <laughs> What's actually next? Like I'm more interested in the, the architecture issues, or more like the the component or the, the structure, like the how, to, how to do this, or like from a kind of humoristic sense, like really getting very rigorous, more like scientific investigation, or like on which side you would see yourself. I think they're running parallel. I mean, I don't think I don't think I can pick a side there. I uh, there's work on either side that needs to be done. I, I think the structural is is working side by side with with the form uh, form form to architecture object. You know, I, I find that uh, the structural issues there and it will solve the issues uh, at, at scales. I mean, right now the uh, the project in Dallas is uh, we're actually building that one. Uh, we're trying to make it out of felt and a couple other materials. 
Uh, actually, we're actually trying to paint a, a lawnmower right now white, and so <laughs> we have this like bag giraffe that's soon you know, lay over it, and, uh, and we're, we're having we have an exhibit coming in uh, in L.A. and like sometime next year, but uh, I don't know if that's going to happen anytime soon. Um, but yeah, so we're trying, I mean, it's the same thing with the work. I started small, we're starting small right now, and we're just going to start scaling it up big. So I have a guy working with me right now. We're, we're doing structural side while I'm playing around with this thing in the computer still. Uh, so they're running side by side. I think this, the structure side's moving a little slower because as you can probably pretty much see, major issues when it scales a little bit, so. Uh, but they, I mean, th there's possibilities. I mean, there's, there's a lot of new, new uh, technology coming out that th this is getting more and more realistic. So, I mean, I can sit and 3D print this thing probably too, so. <laughs> and it would look like that, but I think that kills, like you were saying, Jills, kills the point. But, anyhow. Thank you. Thank you.